So in this quick video, I gathered the simple guide to make good photos and videos on your iPhone coming from a creator and filmmaker of 8 years. I won't be diving too deep into the settings, I just want to map out the most important ones that significantly improve your footage quality. Now we are in the settings. For video recording use 4K at 30fps, it has the highest quality. If you want to record slow motion, sure use 60fps or 120fps, but the file size will be huge and it still will be slightly worse than 4K at 30fps. Coming down to other video settings, enhanced stabilization is wild. It would slightly zoom on the video, making it quality just a tiny bit worse, but the stabilization on iPhones is crazy. No other average post-processing software can stabilize footage like that. And here at the bottom toggle lock white balance option to keep your video colors consistent while filming. Going to other video settings record sound in mono, so you have consistent sound in your ears. On older phones toggle off record stereo sound. Then click formats and choose most compatible. It uses the JPEG and H264, these formats are widely used across all the platforms and it will be easier to edit them and send them to anyone. For photo modes, click on the highest resolution, 24 megapixel, toggle Pro Raw and Resolution Control and choose the Pro Raw Max for the highest possible quality. At the bottom of this page, for video capture, toggle ProRes and choose the ProRes encoding lock. This is only for 15 Pro and 16 Pro owners that want to make a step ahead with the quality of their videos. It will make the highest quality footage possible, but you'll need some skills to edit this footage. The next important setting preserve settings, so your iPhone would always have the consistent settings when you open up a camera app. Here I toggle on camera mode, so if I am making videos, closing and opening an app will keep the video mode on. Coming down here, I like to have the exposure adjustment preserved. I slightly underexpose all the footage, because iPhones and all phones in general make the photos brighter, which technically is not really good for that nice photo and cinematic video look. So if we open camera app, here I keep my exposure under 0.3. I preserve settings for live photo, so if I turned off the live photo, it won't turn back on when I open my camera app again. Overall, live photo is a nice feature, but it makes the footage a lot worse. And further in the settings, I toggle grids and level, and that will help us with composition. Now we set up correct settings for the iPhone and we can test it in action. One of my favorite accessories that helps me with making photos and videos is this Moft Invisible Tripod Wallet. Last year I used the previous version wallet and tripod separately almost every day. But this time it's not just a wallet, not just a stand and not just a tripod, it's all three in one. This thing is pretty minimal, lightweight, so it doesn't make the phone bulky. And here is where magic happens. Just like that, I've got a sturdy tripod ready to help me shoot content hands-free. Whether it's a quick selfie, product shots or video call, this floating mode offers over 30 adjustable angles. I can use it in stand mode with an iPhone standby function at my desk or simply FaceTiming without holding my phone. Or I can simply switch it to vlogging mode and casually film myself without any bulky tripods. And switching between all the modes is pretty effortless. Well, it's not just a tripod, it's also a wallet. I can sleep in two cards right here, which is perfect for me when I'm out in the city. I carry this thing with me 100% of the time, even if it's not attached to the phone, I simply put it in my pocket. It's the simplest card holder I've used and it happens that it's also a MagSafe accessory with a tripod. NFC chip still works great, so I use it to pay for groceries and lock doors at my building. No need for extra stuff in my pockets, everything is right in this snap tripod wallet. So if you're looking for an iPhone accessory that does more than just one thing, go check out the Moft Invisible Tripod Wallet. It's compact, practical, and it keeps my setup clean and minimal. And you can grab yours using the link in the description below. Big shout out to Moft for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to setting up the perfect camera shot. So here are some of the simplest rules to make your footage good enough for an aesthetic Instagram. First rule of the film club is we never speak about the film club. Second rule, always wipe your cameras. This is, I think, the biggest mistake people make all the time, even me. Just look at the difference between the dirty cameras and the clean cameras. No other settings influence the quality more than the clean lenses. So we opened up the camera app. If you have newer iPhones, turn on the RAW setting while making pictures, it will make it the highest quality. In the settings, we turn on the grid and this is our greatest helper right now. So to make a good photo or video, you need to know the best composition techniques. I don't know how to explain why this works, but it just works. So the first one is to keep your horizon straight. 
Of course, you can rotate the footage and straighten the line on the edit, but you crop the image and it will make the quality worse. So at least try to keep the horizon straight. So not like that, not like that, simply like that. Second technique, symmetry. When taking a picture of people or objects, place the objects in the center and it magically will make your photo or video better. Third technique, rule of thirds. It's simple. The grid divides the screen by three parts and to make a nice composition, put your main objects on the thirds, on the right or on the left, at the bottom or at the top. If we place our object in the right thirds and let's say we're sheriff on the left and there is a boat coming and just like that, implementing the rule of thirds, we need another picture. Fourth technique, it's a little more complex, but still simple to replicate. The perspective and vanishing point. So whenever you on the road, the road far away coming to a vanishing point. And we can draw many straight lines that come to this vanishing point. Same in the city or whatever you are. And to make your footage look nicer, try to look at the scene and find those lines and the point where they are connecting. You don't have to put this point inside the frame all the time, just capture the scene with the lines coming to one point. Here are some examples. Same things apply to filming videos. Use all these composition rules and statically film what's going on. A few tips. Try to capture movement. Someone walking in the frame or a car driving by. Don't fly with your camera, the videos won't be good. But if you want to move your camera, move it in the frontal direction or horizontal direction. And try to move slowly for more stability. And the last tip is from the director John Ford that he told to young Steven Spielberg. Where's the horizon? Yeah, it's at the bottom. That's right. Walk over to this painting. Where's the horizon? Where? At the top of the painting. All right, get over here. Now remember this. When the horizon's at the bottom, it's interesting. When the horizon's at the top, it's interesting. When the horizon's in the middle, it's boring as shit. Now, if you have iPhone 15 Pro and newer, you can record log footage. This is the highest quality video with flat colors that gives you so much space to color grade it cinematically. You can film it only if you use external memory, like SSDs. I use the one from company Orico. It has a MagSafe and I simply slap it in the back, connect and it's ready to film. But even without lock, you will record high quality videos. Just follow all the rules above. For photos, the best editing app you can use is Lightroom. The free mobile version gives you pretty much everything you need. At first, you can simply use third-party presets to give your pictures a look in one click. And I left a link to some of my free presets below. I like to color grade everything myself. It's overwhelming at first, but after a few edits, you'll get used to it and you can even create your own presets here. So here is my workflow just to give you an idea. For me, there is no specific rules, so I just go with the flow. Tap edit and tap light. I will slightly add the exposure, just like that. I think there needs to be a little bit of contrast. Highlights, I think we can reduce highlights a little bit. Shadows, uh, I think we need to reduce shadows as well. I want to make the footage a little bit warmer. It seems I think it's good as it is. We'll add a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation as well. And this section helps you to change colors a little bit. So I think reds is where they are. For oranges, a little bit of saturation. Make it a little bit more red. And a little bit of grain to give it film look. So just like that, simply made it more contrasty, more vibrant. Yeah, as simple as that. So for color grading, log footage and all the videos in general, I use Dehancer. It is available for every platform, Adobe, Final Cut, DaVinci, Windows or Mac OS, iPhone, iOS. And it is pretty straightforward and will make your footage look cinematic, like from those creators you watch on Instagram. We don't really need every setting from this tool, I will show you just the most important ones. So from the inputs we uh, choose choose camera and choose the Apple log, so to make our footage from log 
to Rec. 709. So we will lose all those flat colors. We can adjust the exposure here. I think 1.5, 1.4. I think it's okay. So I use grain from the worst to like the most fine uh, grain. I'll choose I think 35 mil, okay maybe 65 mil, 250 ISO. Halation will make your highlights red. It will give this video a cinematic look. I think we'll keep the 65 and we can add also here bloom. Bloom will blur your highlights and the footage will become a little more dreamy. So these are my main functions I use in this tool enhancer. So we took our footage from looking like this to looking like this. And we can also copy it to our Bush Khalifa footage as well, like that. So yeah, so already look pretty good. And uh, also I add here Lumetri Color. It's like the standard tool from the Adobe Premiere to edit your colors. Here I input my LUT, my cinematic LUT that I use like for the last eight years. It gives the video this teal and orange look from the movies. Depends on my mood from 35 to 65. Right now I think it's good at 45. Yeah, just something like that. Add more vibrance, I think. We can add more vibrance. I leave everything else as it is. So yeah, by using just these two simple tools, Dehancer and Lumetri, mostly Dehancer, uh, we made our footage look more cinematic. At the end of the day, I'm not your last source of information. This is simply my approach to capturing photos and videos. And I encourage you to check other videos on this topic too, so you'll have the combined knowledge. That's exactly how I learned all this stuff through years, capturing this information from different sources and non-stop trial and error.